As usual, we're waiting for Ryan, so I thought I'd get a fill in today. He's uh, always on time. He's a little more attractive. Probably got a little bit bigger calves. He doesn't really talk a lot, but uh, he's not too hard on the eyes. Like you welcome, Jack. Okay, sir. You finally ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm finally ready. <sighs> Let's get a hold of That's what Dad used to say, better late than never, Ryan. <clears throat> well, you know what, man? I'm a very important guy. I got a lot of important appointments. When you get to my level of importance, people want your attention. You get pulled in the, so many different directions. When you get to your age, it's hard to roll out of bed in the morning. Okay. Well, then you have to be cla unclassy like that, okay? What's hey, man? What's cracking, my man? How's it going? Not bad, not bad. I apologize for Randy's tardiness. No, no. <laughs> it wasn't Randy, it was me. But, um, I, I don't know. if you, you can only see me, but Randy's on the other side of the laptop. And, okay. um, you're up on a, a monitor, so I'll be looking at the monitor. But, uh, so I'll be looking at you talking to the monitor like this. I'll look like I'm not looking at you, but I am, okay? Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. And, uh, shit, man, I see Ali up on there. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. I got my whole room is, like, littered with posters, man. No shit, a bit of a comic book guy, eh? Yeah, yeah. And who's that, who's that beside Ali? Uh, oh, that's just, that's just Wiz Khalifa. Is that Khalifa? <laughs> I thought that would have been Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, yeah, it's Wiz Khalifa. It's, like, back in the day, though, like, old Wiz, old Wiz. No yeah. shit. Yeah, you a big Ali fan? Yeah, well, it's like, yeah, I would say, like, just the way he fought and, like, how outspoken he was. Like, obviously, I'm not, I wasn't old enough to go and, like, you know, remember when he fought and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, I respect, yeah. I respect some greatness. Yeah, yeah. man, especially, like, I seen, I read his autobiography from, like, uh, he put it out in 75, and it was crazy, man. Like, at the time, U.S., 1975, or 1960s and everything, with the civil yeah. rights movement, the things that he was doing was insane, man. He was, like, yeah. more than just a sports idol, right? Yeah, yeah. What's it's just that? crazy. It's like the combination of trash talking and bravado and just like everything rolled into one individual. I think that's like really. And he could back I feel like that's something we don't have in today's sports room, you know? No, yeah, like he, they showed, if you watch documentaries on him, he would, um, at the time when he would go to Vietnam and he was um, talking about like, like obviously the civil rights movements, he would go to universities and like debate these kids and debate, debate professors and like he's a fucking uh, boxer, man. He's a boxer. Yeah, you don't yeah. see Mike Tyson doing some shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he was he was smart. He was funny and fucking like he was. He came. He was the greatest boxer, and he came exactly at the right time when like people needed somebody like that around. Yeah. With um, yeah. and man, you know what? Come waking up today, like I was uh, flipped on the news. There's some crazy shit going on right now in the U.S. and Virginia. Yeah, man. It's funny. Me and my friends were just texting about that like earlier. It's like, it's, I saw, honestly, I, I watch the news, but I tend to not watch it these days because, like, so much negativity, and it's easy to get kind of, like, yeah. into that. It's like, it's energy sapping, man. Of course, you want to stay up all the times, but it's just, yeah. like, dude, it's just a lot going on, man. Dude, it's freaking crazy. There was, like, riots and shit. Where I was like, yeah. is this the 1930s? Who the fudge has got, like, yeah. a... A fucking like like these protests for white power in the in nineteen yeah. or twenty seventeen. It's crazy, man. How um, close is that to you? you cause how close Houston. is it to me? Yeah, because you're in Houston, right? Yeah, I'm in Houston. Um, it's like we don't have we don't really have like Houston's kind of like New York City. It's like the New York City of the South. So it's like the the melting pot. It's like it's there's no there's no like true crazy racial divide like that. But like I'm not sure exactly how far it is from here in terms of distance, but yeah. like, I know for sure, like in, living in Houston, we're kind of spoiled because like we just don't, we don't experience that level of, um, you know, racism or anything like that. Like everyone's just kind of like, there's like a Houston culture. Yeah, yeah, sense. yeah. Yeah, you know, like, everyone has like the same type of swag and we all talk the same way. Like it's kind of mixed into one. Yeah, you, know? you got no Southern drawl or nothing. You do talk like the straight, uh, I don't know what kind of accent. Is it like the, what do they call, like, there's like the California, you know when you watch a movie, they say, um, yeah. they say you have the Californian accent when it's almost undetectable, right? 
For like yeah, yeah. Canadian or whatever, because we're from Canada, Toronto, we don't detect it. But U.S. Uh, has got. If you're from New York, you sound like you're from New York. Yeah, if you're from yeah. the South, you sound like you're from the South. From Boston. Yeah, yeah. Boston. <laughs> fuck, man. You know what I mean? Whereas you got, I don't detect any kind of accent. Yeah, it's weird. People, it was. I was just with someone that said that, like, like, yeah, you're from you're from Houston, but you don't really talk like you don't have like that southern slang or something like that. It's like I, mean, I don't know. I guess I guess I don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> Does everyone else from Houston talk like you too? Uh, nah, 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 nah. I'm kind of like an outlier. Like I feel like a lot of people here, like they have real southern slang. Really? No shit. Yeah, real so, southern slang. So when they talk to you, they're like, "Where you from, man?" Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, I, I can do it. It's just like I don't. It just doesn't come naturally. It's like I see what man. Like it's like it's like kind of like that. It's like southern. It's heavy. Yeah, but yeah. I can't, it's not something that comes naturally to me. Yeah, you want to do it just to just to be like everybody else. It's like fuck it, it is what it is, right? Yeah, exactly. So, have you always um, lived in Houston, or you grow grew up in Houston? No, so I was uh, I was born in San Antonio. I moved to Houston like in the fourth grade. So like that's it's been pretty much like I kind of claim San Antonio as my hometown, but Houston's like where I've developed as an individual. So no shit, yeah. fourth grade. And do you have brothers, sisters, or? Yeah, I got I got two brothers and one sister. Are they older brothers or younger brothers? No, I'm the I'm the oldest. So I have a sister. She just went back to UCLA, and then um, the the brother closest to me, he goes to U of H, University of Houston, and then my baby bro, he's uh, he's like I think he's a junior in high school now. No, so how old are how old are you, and how old are your siblings? Okay, so I'm 22. My brother closest to me is 21. My sister is I think she's 19 now, and then my baby bro is like 16. How would growing up? How did you and the one brother is like a year apart from you? You guys get along, you're boys, but did you, was there scraps? Because I know, I got a brother within two years of me, dude, we scrap, like, we were like friends, play, play, hung out all the time, but we would scrap, like, all the time, right? Yeah, we used to, <laughs> there's, man, there's like, I remember specifically, there was one day, like, he's, he's a lot more intellectual than I am, so, like, he's very, like, he reads a lot of books and stuff like that, so like when oh, we clash, son of a like, bitch. Yeah, so, um, so he get, he get reading, me. motherfucker. Yeah, so like, so he get he get out speak me, like he will start saying things. I'm just like, I'm like, yo, I, you're you're beating me right now, but if you want to keep going, I'm gonna whoop your ass. Like, <laughs> so I remember one day, you one, got one, that one, over his head. Yeah, one specific day, he just kept going. I was like, bro, I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. He just kept talking. He's like. It's like, yeah, you can beat the shit out of me, but that doesn't mean you won. I won the argument. I won. Oh, oh, shit, he's I, got him to, I, I almost put him to sleep. Like, I got him to choke, but I almost put him to sleep. So. Yeah. Oh, shit, you're like, shut your mouth. Just shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah, I was like, shut, I was like, shut the yeah. fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Does a, so is he kind of built like you? Is he is he an athletic guy? Or? It's, it's it's so funny. It's so funny because, like, I feel like structurally, I mean, he's, he's like, what, 5'11", but, like, he is... Genetically, like if you decided to live any type of weights, I feel like his physique would look way crazier than mine. Cause like he has like just naturally broad shoulders and like he has like West African genetics with me. So it's like, I feel like if you decided to lift weights then you would, uh, he would look a lot better than me. And, and how, he, he'd probably be stronger too. How tall are you? I'm five six. And how tall is your, and he's five eleven. See, that's the same shit as me. I'm five yeah. nine, fucking brother six one and a half. You yeah, know how that, that pisses me off? Man, I'm like, it son of a happens. bitch. Yeah, it always happens. Like, whenever I meet people, like, they're the older one, and then, like, their their set, their brother is usually taller than them, but younger, so I'm just like, I get it now, so. Now, doesn't that piss you off? Like, how did that happen? And my sister is, um, my younger sister's like 5'8", and I'm 5'9". It's like, how yeah, are you coming yeah. as taller than me, I, man? No, it's crazy. Know? I just not, was my I mom, just not was, that to myself recently. I'm like, damn, my sister's like... She's like five four. She's like right there with me. Like yeah, I can't. Shit, I right? stare. It's all whenever she's around. You're like, mom. Were you smoking when you had me or something? <laughs> uh, what happened when you were pregnant with me? Like and then my sister, yeah. my sister, my brother. He's like five nine now. So yeah, yeah. It, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Uh, so does your younger brother? Is he into athletics or anything? Or uh, he was at first. Like he was. He was pretty gifted with football and basketball. But he's like he's all. He's such a realist. He's like, if I'm not six something, then there's no point in me playing or anything like that. So he stopped. I, I don't know. He just stopped. I guess he just stopped playing. He didn't see. If he didn't see himself being like the absolute best, like NBA, NBA top level player, he's just like, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do any yeah. are any of them interested in like powerlifting like you? How did how did you get into powerlifting? So 
I've always been an active person. Like, like when I was nine, I remember waking up early. Like before, um, I think it was like the fourth grade. I'd wake up before I went to, to school and I'd go and jog and do like the monkey bars and like push ups and all that stuff. And I'd come back, shower, and go to school. So I've always been interested in like being physically. How old were you when you were doing this? I was like nine. Oh shit, what? You can yeah. work out in on the monkey bars and shit. Yeah, yeah. I'd, like, I'd run around yeah. the track, I'd try to run like a mile, and then I'd do like push ups and like upside down wall push ups and all what that stuff. Oh shit. Imagine walking yeah. to school seeing some nine year old putting in work on the yeah. playground. <laughs> He's like, hmm. Like it's like four o'clock in the morning. Shit. Yeah, man. yeah. So that was like early on. And then um, I've just always been into athletics. So whenever I moved to Houston, it was more about football. And uh, like, you know, in, in Texas, like football is like religion. So oh, as, yeah. soon as, you're able to, yeah, as soon as you're able to lift weights, you start lifting weights. So I was squatting like, I was squatting like when I was like 12, 13, 14, oh. around that age. Wow. And it's like, it, yeah, it wasn't like, it wasn't just like your old like fuck around in the gym type of stuff. It's like I would stay after school and go to the high school, the high schoolers, like after school. Like I used to put in so much work because, hey, I don't know. I've been looking for a very, 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 very long time. No shit. So you're 22. In like a ten yeah. year vet in the game. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's a yeah. huge advantage there. And then when you were coming up um, younger, was like sports. Did you were, were you like a wild child, or was are you like totally just dedicated to sports? Very, very even killed. Very even killed. Like whenever it came to football, like I was like all in. To where like I feel like everything I did was to make myself a better football player. And if it didn't benefit me, then there's no point in doing it. Like. I didn't do anything the normal high schoolers did. I didn't go out and party. No I didn't shit. Do anything. Nothing. Nothing at all, man. Like I'm talking about like I'd be like on Facebook and MySpace, I'm like, wow, you guys are out partying. I'm in here where like I was that guy. No was that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Well you're I'm out partying, I'm here pumping weights. And yeah. by the way, your girl follows me on Instagram. I'm just <laughs> saying. I just say, by the way, yo shit. <laughs> No yeah. kidding, yeah. Well, even now at 22, I mean, this is like the prime party years, but just not into the party scene, or? Nah, it just never really, never really interested me. I mean, like, of course, every now and then my love loose, but for the most part, it's just like a very, like, a very tunnel vision type of individual, so it's like, if it's not going to benefit me, then why do it? Yeah, yeah. Do, you got, do you got any vices? Uh, nah. Not, even that, not, not, not anything that comes to mind. It's usually just like food. <laughs> you look. I was gonna say. So everyone would, like, if it's not party and whatever, it's usually food's a tough one, right? So yeah, you yeah. are extremely like. You look like you can body build, right? Did you ever body build? Yeah, I did one body building competition. Yeah. And um, so is it tough for you? Do you have to like count macros or do anything like that, or is it just yeah, so natural? I, I kind of. So for the body building competition, I had to count macros to a T. Yeah. But. For the most part, like, throughout the year, like, I'm not someone that's going to go and eat, like, a lot of shit every single day. So, it's, like, I'm counting. I'm, like, making pretty nutrient-dense um, foods. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I, cook, I cook a lot of other meals. I'm not going to sit here and, like, go to McDonald's every single day and all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like being in the kitchen and cooking. But do you have to do much to be this lean? Because, dude, you look like you are a fucking bodybuilder. Like, when I see you <laughs> on Instagram, I was like, holy shit, this dude is jacked up. <laughs> And ripped, man. Like so, you yeah. so you basically you don't have to like weigh foods or nothing. It's kind of just no, it's just like intuitive eating. So I kind of understand. Um, I'm like, okay, this has so and so amount of grams of carbs or fats or whatever, and I just don't. I don't eat out a lot. Like I I try to minimize it, and if I do eat out, it's usually like cleaner foods. So it's like just chicken and rice from like a restaurant or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but it's I'm I'm like really active inside of the gym, like. Super, super, like it's it's embarrassing, honestly. Whenever I'm in a gym because I can't help myself, I'll literally start running around and like dunking on random machines and no and shit. shit. It's like a hyper yeah, guy. It's bad, man. It's bad. So when you were doing football, how did you end up? Uh, did you go into bodybuilding first, have that show, and then start segueing to powerlifting, or how did you find powerlifting? Yeah, so it's like um, whenever I was so the transition from high school to college. I was trying to figure out a way to kind of bulk up and put on more size. So, like, I started looking at bodybuilding workouts and stuff like that. And that's when I forget about bodybuilding. Like, people like uh, Corey Gregory and C.C. Fletcher. I used to watch all their videos and literally mimic their workouts. And um, I walked on at Texas Tech and I made the team and all that. And then as they were, like, telling me, like, yeah, as they were telling me, like, what's necessary to uh, 
they were telling me like my schedule for the following year, and I literally sat there and I was like, I was like, man, I, I like working out more than I like playing football. To be honest, no shit, so, man. Yeah, so I just I was like, I'm done playing football, and uh, yeah, so bodybuilding it's cool it's cool to like go inside the gym and like work out your biceps and shoulders and stuff like that but at heart i'm a strength athlete like i like moving big weights and stuff like that so i, I didn't even know powerlifting was a thing like two and a half years ago i didn't even know it was a thing Whoa, my friend really? yeah i had no idea i didn't know that there was just a, a thing where you go and just do bed squat and deadlift and that'd be a competition i had no idea and then when yeah. you found out how did you find that so i had a friend i used to work out with that at like this uh, commercial gym, and he kept telling me, he's like, man, you, he's like, you, your squat's pretty nice. And I was like, I appreciate it. He's like, I ever thought about doing powerlifting. I was like, powerlifting, like, what do you mean? And he's like, uh, so like, there's this competition. They do uh, squat, bench, deadlifts, and they get your total. And he was like, looking up my total. He's like, what's your best squat? What's your best uh, bench? And he's like, bro, you'd be like one of the top lifters. And I was like, what? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so when you started out, did you list like was the first step to grab a coach? Or did you start freestyling your own workouts, or? Uh, it's like I've always kind of understood, like at, like watching like uh, Lane Norton and Johnny Candido, I kind of learned how to like structure my workouts to where I was making some type of gains, and then like I kind of got the hang of it. And as time went on, I was like, okay, I know how to program to a certain extent. And uh, it's yeah, there there was periods of times where I was just like messing around, but yeah, I feel like I feel like I approached it pretty well when it came to like structuring myself. Because before, like for football, it's like literally just go in and listen to heavy as you possibly can. Yeah. Every, yeah. Every single one. And your following on Instagram, man, is huge right now. Uh, like you're blowing it up. Is it like? Uh, do you think it's? How do you think it? How did that ball start rolling in terms of that? Uh. Because you're bodied up and you lift heavy weights. <laughs> yeah, I used to do. Um, I used to do the same. Like, do you know squat every day? Like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Something like yeah. So I used to use Instagram for that. Like I would post every single day, um, like my different variation of squat that I did for the for the day, and I started getting a little bit of traction there. And I used to make like little workout edits or whatever on Instagram. I'm like, okay, like I'm gonna put some music to this workout video, I'll make it look cool. And that's back when I had like 15 seconds. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so from there it grew, and then um, I got signed to Alphalete from uh, from Christian Guzman and all that, and then like from there, it just kind of started a snowball effect. I like, just kept growing and growing and growing. And did, when they signed you, were you were you an athlete in one of the sports yet? Was I a powerlifter yet? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was a powerlifter at that point. Okay. Yeah. And I think I had done one meet at that point. No shit. So what, when they signed you, they signed you based off of this kid's got potential. Yeah. So like he's a uh, he. I was. I would always go inside the gym. Like I'd spend. Whenever I go to the gym, like I spend a very long time in there, and like I guess he just noticed the way I was flying around because oh he's oh so this dude is actually in the same gym as you and everything who runs yeah the yeah, yeah yeah and anyone so, who's watching this company is a supplement company <laughs> no no it's uh, Alpha League. I don't know if you've heard of it. it's like Christian Guzman um, you know it's like it's like fitness fitness YouTuber world type of stuff. Ah, it's a, okay. It's a clothing company. Yeah, it's a clothing company. Ah, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, he he picked me up, and he knows he just like said you have a lot of potential. You're a nice guy. He's like, so I want to like sign you to my company, and something like that. So I'm like, okay. And he has like a really big following. So whenever he announced it to the public, it kind of like created a snowball effect. Ah, then yeah, then here we are. So yeah. you started powerlifting, and how many meets have you had now? Uh, I think I think it's been four now. What yeah, did four. what did you total at your first meet? Uh, first meet it was fifteen oh six. So what's that in kilos? Do you know the kilos of that? Kilos? Uh, no. Nah. I mean, I'd have to do the math real quick. Kilos fifteen oh six. So six eighty, six eighty three, I think. No shit, very first meet out, and you were always an eighty three kilo guy. <laughs> Yeah, I started off 83 kilo. Yeah. No shit. So coming into this right now, I think now are you working with Joey Flex? Yeah, now I'm working with Joey. I've been working with Joey for the past three, four months, I think. Something like that. So how did that come about? Because Joey Flex seems to have all these 83 kilo guys, obviously John Hack and Sean Noriega. Yeah. And... yeah. So how did that come so, about? So like I, 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 I had a friend coaching me, like and he was making my program and stuff like that. But as like my my total started getting higher and higher, I wanted to hire someone that was kind of like like within the community because my friend's kind of outside the community, 
And uh, if I wanted to, uh, the way I felt was like if I wanted to take it to the next level, I want someone that knows other lifters. So like whenever it comes to competing against other people, he's like, okay, this person can lift so and so, or like just how to maneuver within the palace community. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I looked at Joey, and I was like, okay, this guy has a combination of social media and his coaching. So I like searched his hashtag, and it's like he has all these different lifters doing different stuff. I'm just like, this is very interesting. I've always wanted to do something where I work off like how I feel. So yeah, I'm just yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I kept, I kept, re- I kept like watching him from afar and how he dealt with lifters and just like how he approaches his clients. Like he's very jokey, joke. He's like very like I don't know how to explain. He's just very yeah. like I know, yeah, because he coached me too, and he is like, um, yeah, he'll joke around and keep it light. Yeah. At the same time, he knows the shit. Like you said, yeah, he, he knows, knows what's going on. Yeah. So I was just like, let me. I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and sign, uh, sign up with Joey, and since then it's been like. Just growth, yeah. What kind of what was the difference once you came on with Joey bef- between what you do now and what you used to do? So before it was like percentages. So it's like you know it's like um, I have my own one rep max and like it doesn't matter how I felt on that day. Like there's a prescribed number that I had to hit when I was in the gym. And Joey, it's kind of like it's RP based. So it's like if you feel like shit one day, then maybe you're not gonna be able to hit a certain amount of weight. Yeah, and it is what it is. And if you're feeling good, you might hit a PR or something like that. And it's just like, it was more managing fatigue, I guess, mm-hmm. whenever it comes to Joey. Mm-hmm. And then my other program, it's like little just numbers. It's like, uh, in a sense, like linear progression. So. And do you find you doing, are you doing a lot of volume with Joey? Did you always do a lot of volume? I know Joey likes volume. Yeah, yeah. So it's like before I do, the volume was by myself. Like I did my own volume. Like I do like three sets of 15 because you're like bodybuilding and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But. Yeah, with Joey, it's different because it's like, <laughs> it has to be a certain amount of weight with the volume, so it's a lot more taxing. I remember that first week, I was like, yo, what the hell happened to me? <laughs> you're like, yo, this is a fucking mistake. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Because I, I'd, I'd always be able to do a powerlifting portion of my workout and then go and do more volume, like in terms of like isolation work. Yeah. And then those that first couple of weeks, I was like, I can't do anything else other than my powerlifting workout because like I'm just dead yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah for sure I know yeah and uh, so looking at it now you were mentioning like social media and, and obviously on social media you got a huge following what are some of the things you notice in terms of pros and cons of social media when you got a following like that and um, I mean even though you're only four or five competitions deep everybody mm-hmm. sees you coming but there's a lot of hype around you real uh, quick I don't, real quick I'm- Ah, uh, man, I don't think so. Like, no, that's, dude, that's, yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, wait. Wait, I, I feel like I feel that's one of the things that's kind of annoying me right now, like, in terms of myself, because I'm more, I feel like I'm more of, like, uh, like I'm in a different sector of social media when it comes to fitness. Like, I want to be engraved in the powerlifting section. Like, I want to be known, like, I want to be, I want to be talking about with, like, the higher level lifters and all that stuff, but I haven't done any big meets to, to warrant that. So it's like, I'm annoyed at myself because I kept like dibbling, dabbling with bodybuilding. I'm just like, I should have just been straight powerlifting for the past two years. Like, yeah, yeah. I waste time, yeah. Well, but, but you're 22, so you got a lot of time left. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Some dudes peak in their 30s, so shit, you could, who knows what you're going to end up doing. Uh, but do you feel like, because you're there is such a huge following on you and everyone's looking your way right now, is there like, it's a lot of pressure real quick, real early, before you even got up there yet, or you just, how do you deal with that? Nah, this, nah, it's just like, that stuff doesn't really bother me. It's just like, I, if, if, if anything, I would that, because it makes me work that much harder. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, like, there's these certain amount of expectations on me, or this person thinks I can't do this, or this person thinks I can do that. So it's either proving someone right or proving someone wrong, and yeah. when I look at it. But it's like, I never, I never really look at social media as like a, a negative thing, Cause it's, it's to me it's only positive. The only the only thing I would say is just like sometimes I tend to think more about oh like I need to film this set and then it kind of distracts me from the workout in a sense. Yeah. But that's like only that's the only complaint I have with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. And yeah, the rest is all positive. Man. And do you find so uh, looking forward? You're going into the U.S. Raw Nationals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so, what are your expectations with that? Because you gotta be. Um, are you are you are you the uh, one? And are the nominations up yet for the U.S. Royal Nationals? Do you know for the roster? Um, for, for like 
Yeah. Are you talking about like the um, prime time or? Yeah. Like, do you know who else is going in there? Would you have the biggest total walking into your class? I I think I should. If, I think you should. Um, should if it, it depends if someone uh, decides to compete or not. Who's that? Yeah, I, can't John compete if he wants to? No. John Hack? No. Are yeah, I thought, he could, oh, yeah. I thought he could compete, but he just can't make the world team. Ah. So there's like no real incentive for him to compete. It's just like if he wants to compete, he'll compete, I guess. But it's not going to like translate to him going to worlds. You know what? Ah, I I mean, it's kind of complicated, isn't it? The way they do yeah. all that. Like you could, I mean, it is, it's a huge, it's a freaking huge meet. Um, so yeah. even if he's not going to the world, it's a hell of a... But is John doing boss of bosses? John is doing boss of bosses. So I don't think he'll be doing the, doing both of those. When is U.S. Raw Nationals? Um, it's like October, it's early October. So it's like October 4th or something like that. October 13th, I don't know. Somewhere around there. I should probably look it up again. You know what? Uh, he might be able to. I don't know when the cutoff is to sign up. But uh, besides I mean, it, he signed up or not? I don't, I don't, oh, are you talking about have they released like the roster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have they released who oh, signed up? No, nah, I don't. I don't think so. I haven't gotten an email about that yet. Gotcha. Because no matter what, I think you're going to be near the top. So you're going to go in the open or the junior? Uh, I think I signed up for both. Oh, are you doing both? Yeah, I think. Can't you do? Like, I think I signed up for both. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure because we're in Canada. It's slightly different. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm not sure how that would work. But, Either uh, you can sign up for both, or I just sign up for Open. And are, So your plans are to go to the uh, the World Championship? Uh, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, so looking at it, if you were to look at it, because like making the world team, and I'm not sure how the U.S. works, if you if you go in as a junior in the Open, let's say like, John Hack or someone else goes in the open, and let's just say he, he takes the open. I'm not saying it is going to happen, but let's just say. Could you then go in at, go on the world team as a junior? Or are they like, because you lifted more than anyone else who was a junior? Or are they like, nope, you're stuck, you can't go now? Do you know how that works? I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, ah, oh man. Because I, okay, I, I'm pretty sure I, I competed as, a, I'm competing as a junior in open, so I think that. You know, if he goes as the the open guy, then I can still go as a junior since I did play uh, well enough for both of them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, it would help because you want, like, the best people going on there. Now, who else uh, are you? Do you follow other lifters and, and keep track who's doing what? Yeah, yeah, I keep track of everyone. <laughs> who's, who's the guys that you, you've been watching? Uh, definitely Sean. Sean's a teammate, so, like, we'll, we'll go back and forth about our lifts and stuff like that. Sean Noriega. Yeah, so I know this. Yeah, we all noticed. Yeah. yeah, you guys seem to. Here's the thing. It looks like fucking Joey's got you guys on like a very similar program. You guys probably got the same body types, same whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, he, he he actually, I think he lifts more than I do. Like I'm, in terms of like his uh, throughout the week, like I think he lifts more. I only lift uh, four times. I think he lifts like I think five. Six. You only do four days a week. Mm -hmm. No shit. No kidding. So yeah. what are, what do your days look like then? So Monday is uh, heavy bench and uh, no, my bad. Monday is heavy squat and bench, and then Wednesday is heavy pulls, bench. Friday is just squat, and then Saturday is heavy bench. No kidding, they have four day a week. Now is that the design because of your schedule, or is that just what Joey wants for you? No, uh, that's I, I'm I'm pretty sure it's a, like a pretty vanilla thing for Joey, but I've been responding to it. He's just like, hey, bro, come fix it. So. No I guess we're, yeah, I guess we're waiting to see if I max out, and then he'll start throwing in um, different monkey wrenches to see if like, it's going to change anything. So what yeah. do, you, do you do anything else on those uh, other three days? Yeah, I bodybuild. No shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could have guessed that. Bodybuilding yeah. selfies, right? <laughs> yeah. Body, bodybuilding and take pictures after the workout. <laughs> That's right. Good stuff. No kid. And uh, is yeah. there anyone else you follow? And how about like Brett Gibbs? Do you look ahead at like oh, the Brett Gibbs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, follow, I follow Brett. I follow John. I follow everyone. I try to keep up with everyone. Like uh, Cody, Cody Yeager, um, Chance Mitchell. He's not in my weight class, but like I still, I still keep up with him. Um, I'm trying to think of what was it? Uh, Dexter, Dexter Jackson, I think, or Dexter Jones, or or who's, Jack. Who's the guy that Sean Noriega, um, Gruden? Gruden, oh yeah. He doesn't post uh, very much. He's pretty low yeah, key. So, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll add him to the list too. Yeah. Yeah, he don't post very much though. He comes out of nowhere. But that yeah. dude, yeah. I seen him at the IPF World Championships. Um, did you watch the IPF World Championships, by the way? 
Yeah, I watched. I watched just like the the controversial stuff. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. I was actually yeah. um, commentating that that actual session with. Yeah, Green that's why. Yeah, that's yeah. why it sounded so familiar. I was like, man, this guy has. I had to have watched something where he was commentating. He sounds so familiar. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was like, yeah, shit, dude, that came down right down to the last deadlift, and it was who mm -hmm. controversial. I had people messaging me, be like, what the shit is going on. But yeah. Um, yeah, Gruden, I've seen him in like like up close and personal, real life. That dude is, he's not a tall dude, but I'll tell you what, he's built like a fucking truck, man. He is yeah. thick. He is thick, so, man. Yeah, so when I heard about John, when I heard about John, uh, yeah, John Gruden, right? I'm like, I'm like, yo, isn't that like the Monday football? Because his, do you know who his dad is? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was there. He was in Meeks Bell Roos. Yeah, he was yeah, there. Yeah, so I was like, that's funny. Um, That's funny he has the same name as John Gruden. And then like I went on his Instagram. <laughs> And I started scrolling down some more, and he's like at like, I think he like, I think he's an assistant coach for the Redskins or something, or like the he, ball boy or something. I don't know. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit, this is John Gruden's son. I was like, John Gruden, oh, John Gruden, yeah, dude. He yeah, was so, there. Oh. We were um grabbing co-commentators and people were like, you gotta get John Gruden's dad in there. And I was like, no, kid, yeah. we we're looking for him, but he wasn't there after like after uh, John was done lifting the stuff. They kind of took off, so we couldn't find him. That'd be pretty crazy. Having him yeah. as a co-commentator, because I think he does commentating <laughs> stuff too. In uh, football. Funny, yeah. yeah. But uh, he would definitely be another guy. So cause I know him and Noriega got a bit of a rivalry. Cause I think um, right. at last Raw Nationals, I think Gruden won. Then at the Arnold's, uh, <laughs> Sean Sean like beat that total, got a real like a big total at the Arnold's, so it was higher than Gruden's nomination. Going into the worlds. Gruden had beat him at Raw Nationals, but Sean had a bigger like total. And then they yeah. so the showdown at the Worlds was fucking thick, man. Came out right down to the wire, and then controversially Gruden takes it. And then yeah. so now we're gonna have a possible rematch. Sprinkle you into the mix. Um, mm -hmm. What what's your so far? What is your highest total coming into this? Uh, it's sixteen eighty six. Sixteen eighty six. Yeah. Do you know what that is, sir? Can you check that out what that is in kilos? It's big. It's uh, <laughs> 7 765, I think. 765. So what do you are, are you what are you anticipating in, in a range of uh cuz I think um, that's quite a bit bigger than those fellas in juniors anyways. Uh, and it's like it, I hate that toll because I mess, I <laughs> I had some I had to make some spotty decisions during the meet. So it just messed up the the total or whatever. So I'm just like, uh, it's, it's whatever. I I don't even like counting that meat, but it's like the biggest total I have for the 83. So do you um, feel do you feel like you could do a lot more? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah really? Sure. No shit. What do you yeah. think? What do you think you got in the tank? Ah uh, man. Uh, be like man. Ali. Be uh, like your boy in the background, Ali, who made those predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like, okay, so, um, it's tough for me to talk in kilos, so let me just try to buy what yeah, I have. Yeah, okay, we'll work it out, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, oh, that's not right. 1790, I mean, 794 kilos, is that right? I hope 794? 794. Uh, fuck, it, 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 you damn right it's all right. <laughs> that would I'm get you a sure win, sir. Right, that would be a lot more than you need to win, I would predict. I mean, yeah, so when like, you go, do you think are you gonna? Well, I guess if it's, if you're in the open, it depends who shows up. But um, do you think you would go for a PR? Or do you think you're just gonna go for the win? At Raw Nationals? Yeah, because because uh, it's that world I, selection team on the line, right? So it's kind of tough. I know Joey's gonna help you handle it more likely, and yeah, he's really yeah, I'll, good. I'll, yeah, I'll just go with what he calls because. I mean, like for the most for the most part of my meets, I tend to PR. Like that's when I perform my best. Like that's when I hit the weights that I've like never really hit before. But whatever he feels like needs to be done to secure the the win, I'm willing to do. But yeah, I think so. I really, I think yeah, I think 800, 800, 800 kilos for a total would be. Um, you know, you know, there's only two dudes ever who have done 800 kilo totals. Hack and really? kids. Hack and yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah, I feel a like big company, man. Yeah, so I did. I did the. Uh, yeah, that should be done. Yeah, this upcoming meet should be like around seven, seven ninety. Cause I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go like all the way out. It's kind of more like a to see where I'm at. It's just kind of like a, a tune up meet, and then like Ron Nationals, I'm gonna try my best to kind of like leave it all on the platform. Do you, so you have a meet uh, before Ron Nationals? Yeah, it's in uh, two weeks. Oh no shit! I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this meet is where you're thinking seven ninety then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. either, either, either seven, either, either seven ninety or high. Yeah, seven ninety right there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. If it goes all right, yeah. What's, 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 what's your walk-around weight? What's my what? Walk-around weight. Like, your, how much are you cutting down for each meet? Um, I'm like around 192, 190, around there. And you cut around 10 pounds of water? Yeah, no, like right now I'm cruising around like 187 because I, I just do like the – because so when I'm cruising around 190, I'm eating like – you know, that's when I'm like eating freely. I'm not really paying attention. Yeah. Like I'll just go, like if I feel like eating um, fast food, I'll go eat fast food. If I feel like eating ice cream, I eat ice cream. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so like whenever I'm getting close to a meat, I just kind of just like clean up my diet a little bit, and I get like around 187 ish, and then I just cut the extra four, just water oh, cut. That's, that's so easy. Four pounds will be nothing. So it probably affects you not at all, eh? Yeah. Nah, not really. So 790, you realize? I think it was. 795 won the world championships at the IPF world championships in Minsk, Belarus. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. You, you go to a local meet and some poor bastard's going to show up like, oh, fuck me. Okay, good. Yeah, well. <laughs> He's like, "That's," and then that happened. Thank you. I got 500 kilos. <laughs> no kidding. So if you hit that, I guess, yeah, I, it would absolutely, because I think we had Joe on here. Uh, Joey Flex came on before the world, and he was kind of debating, this is a little ways back, which way you guys would maybe go if Sean was going to go with the junior route one more year, because I think Sean's Norang is still the junior, and if you might go the open route, and we were kind of talking, and I was, like, yeah. I was like, you would be a heavy, 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 heavy favorite to be a world champion in the junior, so then it's one of those gambles, do you gamble away a for sure I don't, I don't want to say it for sure because it's sports, but a really heavy yeah. favorite for a world championship in junior for that no. open. But yeah, I'd, I'd rather go open, man, to be honest with that, you. Well, that's the thing because that's what John did. John was yeah, a junior, it's a and he's like, fun. fuck it, I'm good enough. And yeah. if you – look, at if you hit an 800 total or anywhere, like an eight, like at Raw Nationals, if you hit an 800 total, you'd be crazy not to go open because that's it. That would be the biggest total we've seen in the IPF anyways this year. Or, or wait, actually, Gibbs, I think, hit about eight. I think he hit 814 at a Pacific Invitational or something like that. DLC, I think it's DLC. <laughs> yeah. But that's, dude, you're right up in there. Yeah, I really want to, I just really want to compete with them. I feel like, I feel like my bench is a little bit behind, but, um, yeah, I just want to, that would be awesome to be able to compete with, like, like John and then Brett and then, like, like other people. Oh, man, that would be so fun. So I'm a huge competitor. So I feel like whenever you're 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 competing against other people, you tend to rise up. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Everybody's bench is a little bit behind Gibbs. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <like, laughs> what's up with this guy's bench? <laughs> he's like, he's looking he's looking to hit a five hundred soon. Like he's not yeah, far yeah. off. Yeah, it's Jeez. insane what yeah. he's doing. But he's built to power lift though. All of his levers actually you're probably pretty built to power lift yourself though. But that would be I think if John comes back. I think that would be an amazing, like, you know, the Battle of the 105s this year at the World Championships? Everybody's like, the Battle of the 105s, Battle of the 105s. If John can come back to the IPF, and he's got to stop, for this to happen, he's got to stop doing these USBA meets. If he comes back, holy shit, man, you, Brett, uh, and John, and then sprinkle in the guy from Kazakhstan if he could, you know, whatever. And you, you it would be the Battle of the 83s. It'd be insane, man. That'd be so much fun. That'd be so. That'd be so much fun. Oh, the hype! Yeah. The hype around it, man. I, I was. I actually. Uh, I was lucky enough to do the commentating for Brett versus John Hack. Uh, yeah. For their battle, could yeah. cut cut the tension with a knife in that room, man. It was so heavily hyped. Same thing. The battle of the one hundred fives. I did the commentating for that, dude. It was insane. Let me tell you something. If you're involved in a meet like that, like there's obviously every competition at the world, it's hyped, but. Everyone knows when one of those weight classes is that kind of a matchup, that kind of a lineup, everybody's watching all eyeballs on it, man. That was in uh, Keeling, Texas, right? That's right. Did you see it? Yeah. I was like, I was like going to go to the meet, too. I was like, ah, should I drive up there? I don't know. And then, like, I, I think I bailed last minute, but, man, that sucks. I, I, should, I wish I was there to watch that. Person. Dude, it was, it was nuts. Uh, Johnny Candido sat in as a co-host, and it was, it was, they went back and forth. People weren't. I, I thought maybe Gibbs would take it, but John's <laughs> progress has been insane. Do you talk to yeah. John much? Do you talk to John like other guys on Team Flex? I, I talk to Sean a lot. John's kind of like, I, I think John just does his own thing, man. Like, he's just kind of chilling. He'll, like, drop, he'll, he'll just drop me in every now and then just, like, say something, but 
Yeah, we haven't really we haven't really talked to an extent or anything like that. It's just funny because I remember I remember like a year and a half ago when I first started powerlifting. Um, yeah, someone said his name. They're like, yo, this is kid up in like Wisconsin or something like that. He's doing crazy numbers. I was like, let me see. I got like, what? I was like, yeah. I was like, bro, he squats what? He yeah. does what? I'm like, how does he do this? And then yeah, I was just like, that is crazy. And it's since then though, your numbers are like super high. Um, like this progress has been, has it just been rocking and rolling for you? Like since you got into powerlifting? Cause that's that total is like really hopping up there. Like your potential at 22, you know, I mean, how, how your kilos are, are piling on this total. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's just, I specifically deadlift. Like I've only been deadlifting for like two years now. Jeez. So it's like, yeah, I, I didn't, as a football player, you don't really deadlift. It's more power cleans. So oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, yeah. It's like I last just last couple of months I've been getting more and more comfortable with deadlift. So yeah. In in terms of um, powerlifting, is there anybody <laughs> who are the guys that you look up to and draw inspiration from? Uh, everyone, like my my competition man, just like and whenever I that's why I like social media so much because I can see what they're doing some days. Like you know, like sometimes me and Sean will have a week where we're like like friendly fire a little bit. It's like. Oh, I pulled this. Oh, okay. So, um, I was Sean pulled this. I'm gonna try and pull that. Or Sean benched this. I'm gonna try and bench that. And it's like going back and forth with other lifters. Like going back and looking at um, Brett versus John in the IPF Worlds. Like that's motivating to me. Um, Ray Williams. Just like I don't know. Just watching lifters just like lift is just motivating in some. Because you know. Yeah, Joey Joey mentioned these two going off against each other. Yeah, Joey said. One, as soon as one does something, the other one wants to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you ever find though? Like, do you stay within your RPEs, or do you ever start pushing it because you're like, you see what Sean did, and you're like, fuck, I gotta yeah, put that weight so, on. Yeah, so, some days I'll definitely go off track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're human, yeah, right? Yeah, I can't help it. Some, sometimes, like, just the competitive nature, I'm like, okay, Sean did this, and it's like, it may be a little bit, like, pushing it, but I try to I try to keep it where it's supposed to be, but sometimes it just kind of goes out there. And do you have people that you train with um, in your gym there, like your training partners you train solo a lot i train solo no shit yeah my gym is uh it's like it's the same so i said i was sponsored by alphalete they, they also have a gym um it's more of like a bodybuilding take pictures type of gym and it's like i'm like one of the only powerlifters there so it's just me kind of <laughs> lifting <laughs> is that tougher though doing it by yourself like do you think obviously yeah, it's working for you but mm -hmm. you know I, I prefer to i prefer to train alone in my opinion like it's just it allows me to kind of zone out and like I train with like a certain type of anger so it's like kind of weird to train with like other people I guess so so basically you go in and scare the shit out of everyone in your gym yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, so, some days it's a little bit awkward in there because like I'll be like I'm like kind of like in my zone and like people people that I know will look at me and they're like hey what's up I'm not really responding so it's a little bit like a boxer weird. going down to the boxing ring type deal you're like in the zone yeah. with the yeah. so some of the questions we got your your trademark is uh, wearing dog tags, and then mm. whenever you lift, you got the you bite off down on the dog tags. Is that just yeah. like a natural ritual that just kind of happened organically, or is there like any kind yeah. of significance to it, or is it just a ritual so, that happened organically? Yeah. So it, the the dog tags, I had a coach in high school. Like he was uh, he was my head football coach, and like we were really close. And uh, he he was murdered. So I decided to get my necklace after, named after him. So it has like his um, his name. The day he died, um, his motto, which was living the dream, and then the number I wore for him. So like, I like before I start any type of lift, like whenever it comes to bodybuilding, I mean not not bodybuilding, but powerlifting, I'll like kiss my necklace and point it to the sky, like touch my chest, and then like before it used to be longer, so I used to like move around a lot, and it used to annoy me, so I just put it on my mouth to keep it stable. Ah. And, yeah, I, I don't even. I, I don't like when people say I bite down on it. Like it's just it's just hanging in my mouth. I'm not biting it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, you but, can't tell, but yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I can't tell. It's just kind of like in my mouth like this. Like, it's just like that. I'm not actually like biting down. Yeah, yeah, like a rabid dog or some shit. It was yeah, just, uh, yeah. yeah. So that's not supposed to do that. So that's yeah. just practical reasons because it's flying around on you and it's less, com yeah. it's more comfortable that way. Yeah, that's well, it, it started as that and then it became like a ritual. Now it feels a little bit weird when I don't have it anymore. Well, that's, that's how rituals go when it comes to like weightlifting. Once you start a little yeah. bit, you just all of a sudden can't stop. And I was saying when I was doing the IPF World Championships, you could see guys come out and like every single squat, they had this exact same rituals, every single dead bench. 
And if you ever see somebody come out and they don't do it, like like a guy came out and you could tell he's going for a PR, pulling for the win, but he didn't fucking do his normal ritual. Shit yeah. was a little off and how I said, I go, I don't like that that just happened. And it's not yeah. like superstitious. It's just more in his mind, he's not on the yeah, same, right? Confidence. He's not the same Yeah, his confidence isn't there. He's rattled. Yeah. Everything's got to be the same. That's something I tell a lot of people. It's like whenever you have to build a routine that can be repeatable because it creates a certain level of consistency. So it's like, you know, if you're a person that kind of just like brush your shoulders off before you squat or bench or something like that, make sure you do that from your warm-up set to your final set because that's going to create a kind of confidence and a, uh, a level of certainty that you know you're going to hit that weight. Mm-hmm. So, like, I have I have some I do for deadlift, squat, and bench, and they're all different. Mm-hmm. But I know if I go through it, I'm like, all right. It's, I'm going to lift this. So I'm it's good. mentally the same. You do it in training. You do the same thing when you're when you're out on the platform. It's like, if anything is slightly different, I'm just like, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. You're not mentally in the same space, right? Yeah. So yeah. do you mind what, uh, talking about what happened to your coach in terms of how he got murdered? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. It's like whenever people ask, it's like it's something I notice. I don't even talk about a lot or like I like kind of connect the dots, but... Unfortunately, I get this is the story. So um, he was, I guess, cheating with like one of the school teachers, and then the teacher's husband went and killed him, her, and himself. Holy shit, man! Yeah. How old were you at the time? I was like sixteen-ish, right there. Yeah. And this dude was obviously a pretty big deal in your life then. He was like a mentor to you. Yeah, he was like a. He was a. Uh, like, I've always had both my parents in my life, but whenever I went to school, he kind of pushed me to be, like, a better... Because, like, I was, I was captain of my team, so it's like we always had, like, a lot of conversations with each other, and it's just, like, he's, he instilled a lot of stuff that I do today. Like, I try not to curse too much on social media. Like, I try to, like, walk around and hold myself accountable for the stuff I put out, because I understand that, like, as much as I don't want to be responsible for it, I am responsible for people that are, like, are following my channel and stuff like that. So I never want to be a, a bad influence on somebody. And he always preached to me. He's like, you never know who's watching. You never know who's there. So like, try to make sure that you are mindful of what you put out. Yeah, especially like yourself, man. You got a lot of eyeballs watching. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people taking it away. And this is this is before, imagine you win the U.S. Nationals, go to the World Championships, and shit could really blow up, right? So how? Yeah. So what, when, when she was murdered, how did that impact you being 16 years old? Yeah, it was, uh, it was like the first time someone in my life, like, passed away. Like, someone that, like, I was close with and, like, like he was, like, a tangible person right here. It was just something so weird to me. I, I, I just, like I said, I never experienced it. And it's just, like, it didn't feel real for, like, a couple of months. Like, I would go to school thinking that he would still be there, in a sense. And it was just weird. So, when like... 16, you got no concept of... Everybody's yeah. living forever when you're 16. You yeah, don't think... Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just tough because, like, the, the team was, like, expecting me to stand in front of, the, like, the school and talk about it and all that stuff. I'm just like... At fucking 16? Holy yeah, sad was, man. Was a, when, when I think about it, when I go back and think about it, I'm like, yo, this is, that's a weird thing to put someone in. No like, shit, especially a 16-year-old. In your school, yeah. your school, probably had two or 3,000 students. So. And, 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 like, this guy's your mentor and the whole nine, and that's a lot to put yeah. on a kid, man. It was, it was, a, it was a weird moment because, like, we were trying to have, like, a like a, a coming to type of deal like it was like i think the the week after he passed away we we're like okay let's come together as a school and talk about coach why i remember him in good light so like we had a couple people speak and i was like they asked me to do it and i was like okay but i don't know what to say this is such a weird moment such an awkward moment did you say yeah. something did, did you get up there and no, say something? I, I said i just said like <laughs> i said like two words and i just started crying so i just missed my coach and then i walked off so yeah yeah, I mean that's tough. Well, it'd be not only that, but just Texas football, religion, like yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Like it'd be. I imagine the whole school was crying when you went up there. Like it was just yeah. the, the two go so hand in hand down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was someone that's like that was like really loved like within the school. Like everyone knew who he was, and like he was such a he was so jokey, jokey. It's like it's funny. It's it's not funny, but it's funny because he died on um, April first, so April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh, so like, with, no yeah. shit. Yeah, so for the longest, I'm thinking, I'm like, this guy is just like... This motherfucker's like, playing? I'm just playing. No, yeah, because yeah, he plays dude. jokes like that. You half wanted that to happen, but yeah, yeah. No yeah, he, he plays jokes like that. So I'm just like, okay, you know, they're just testing me. And they're like, no, like, he's really going. I was like, what, 
when you um so when you're looking for a coach or whatever like joe like for instance now joey flex is coaching you do are you do you look for somewhat of a mentor role as well as a guy who um you know coaching or or how do you uh no nah, not no nah, not nah, not nah, not so much it's just like not anymore you kind of yeah nah, not anymore but i feel so, like i feel like i've got not not obviously not everything i'm still 22 but in terms of powerlifting nah like not nah, not that Beck and Joey though kind of goes hand in hand with that other coach though because Joey jokes around, has fun, does stuff. Yeah, like that you did too, basically so. describe Joey when you described that. Yeah, guy. exactly. But it's, it's, a bit they, of a here. Yeah. it's a bit of a pattern here, sir. <laughs> yeah, Joey's kind of different though because like Joey will be like, I'll go off the rail and like miss my RP or go like overshooting, but like, you know, hey, it's fine. You know, just next week make sure you hit it. My coach would chew my ass, man. Really? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's just true. It's tougher too when it's just through social media yeah, than shit. in real yeah. life. If it was yeah. real life, you might be like, "Come on, man, what the?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No shit. Do you do you coach athletes as well? A little bit on the side, yeah. And is it yeah. online or is it just in person? It's online, and I have one friend that I coach in person. In a sense, like whenever she's around me, like I try to make sure that I'm like focusing on her and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's online. So you currently taking on more clients? No. <laughs> no? Okay. You fully maxed out? No. I, like, okay, I know sorry, this, everybody. I, did, I tried. <laughs> I did, yeah, I did, I did it super early, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I was it, like, honest, like, I had to be real with myself because, like, obviously I'm doing my own stuff, and, like, I'm not, like, have other obligations, so I'm not going to keep pushing, coaching, and giving, like, bullshit plans and stuff like that if I can't give, like, my full time to it. So I'm just, I'm just, yeah, this I learned my lesson the first time. <laughs> Dude, and that's pretty damn honest with you, because some people would just take the money and fire off whatever the hell. You know it's, what I mean? it's easy. It's, it would be so easy to just turn around right now and like screenshot a blank page and say, email my email for coaching, and like emails would come up and it'd be like easy money, but it's like, that's not, I feel like that's not, that's not, uh, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the way to go. Like, that's respectable. I, yeah, I don't have the time for that kind of stuff. So do you like? Do you do you find like you might do that in the future? Yeah, huh? I'm just waiting for the proper opportunity, proper time. Like right, I just have a lot of stuff that I want to tackle, and it's like that's eight hundred total. <laughs> yeah, eight hundred total gets you there. That's a start. That's a start. No shit. So what do you do right now for a day job? Day job, nothing. YouTube, you- social media is full time. No shit. You you make money doing that? Yeah, yeah. Wowzers. No, okay, so how does that yeah. work? For really? Me, so you don't know about the whole like social media aspect of like all that stuff and like. Well, how do, uh, how, do you, how do you make enough? Yeah, like tell it like if you don't mind, you don't gotta crunch. Well, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like whenever actually, I'm gonna use the restroom real quick because I've been needing to pee for Let's the longest. Let's do it. I, I gotta drain my fat dick too. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I'll be right back, man. I got to pee bad. <laughs> talk, talk, talk to yourself. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, sir. Man, I feel a lot better now. I feel a lot better too. I'm not gonna lie, I was drinking last night. Uh, I, do, I, I do have vices. And, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm chugging water. And... <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, social media, there's like this whole, um, it's actually, it's funny, like I, before I even started like 
YouTube, I mean, yeah, YouTube and all that stuff, like, I didn't understand, like, the possibility of, like, earning money, like, on Instagram, YouTube, and all that stuff, and it's, like, as I got more and more into the community, I was, like, oh, wow, like, you could make a pretty solid living doing this kind of stuff, so it's, like, basically, it's, like, adding up your sponsors through, let's say, money you make through YouTube, um, sponsors, and, like, if you do coaching and stuff like that, and then, obviously, you want to start a business off on the side, so you're not completely reliant on just, like, sponsor money and all that stuff, so it's, like, I'll sell, like, shirts, and then I have another project that I'm working on behind the scenes, so it's like you create so many different avenues of revenue mm. that like, once you look at the end of the month, you've made so and so. You're like, oh wow, like, this is pretty solid money. It's more than you would have thought, Bristol. Yeah. So if yeah. someone wants to, do you want to plug where they might be able to buy shirts and stuff like that? Yeah. So it's like it's just Russell.com. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. Russell.com. Sounds yeah. good, man. Sounds good. Yeah. So looking ahead, Ray, you got any questions? Have you ever had any uh, injuries or anything like that? I tore my ACL when I was like 15, 16, around there. Is that so, a football injury? Yeah, football injury. Yeah. And have you had you like any injuries right now? You all good? Nah, I'm all good. All good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds good. Ren, you got any questions you got from fans or whatever? No, we, we had a couple. Uh, we, we had the, we had the questions. We already, sprinkled which, them in already. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is pretty much it. one of the same ones were coming up was what what the dog tags were representative of, and then how the hell you stay so lean? Yeah. I say so lean. Did you, would you plan on doing another bodybuilding show at some point? Uh, man, I kept saying I was going to do one in like 2018, but no, nah, not anymore. <laughs> powerlifting is going to be like 100% yeah, of your focus? Uh, powerlifting is, I want, like, I just really, really want to compete against the best and then like be able to stand amongst those guys. So like that's going to take some time. So mm -hmm. might as well just be put like on the back burners. So here's, here's a question we ask everybody who's on here. Um, how would you like to be remembered when all is said and done? Mm. That's a good question. That's this is a hard one, though. We saved this one for the last question. This is the last question before we let you go. But if, if, you, if you're looking back, because, I mean, you got your boy Ali on there. You got, you know, like, if you're thinking, like, I'm not saying you got to be the next Ali of your sport, but at 22, you have to hold, like, God knows what you're capable of. And, you know, you could, uh, so how would, how do you think you want to impact the game? Because you have a, you, you, have, you have a unique situation where, A, um, you, you're, you're extremely talented, B, you're popular as shit. In terms of our sport, this is one of your, like, a rising star, and then you also got the look. I mean, you got to look like a bodybuilder, too. You, like, you have what people would expect. So you got a really good opportunity here. Looking ahead in the future, when all is said and done, what are some of the things you like to have accomplished and be remembered as? Accomplish definitely like remembered as like at least one of the the better powerlifters in the game, if not like the best. Like I want to be, man. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, man. I want to beat John. I want to beat Brett. I there you be, like, go, that a boy. That's what we want to hear. That's it. It's, not, it's like I'll say this. I'll say this stuff in the gym repeatedly, but like whenever it comes to saying it to actual people and having it on record, I hesitate. But like I'm sure like John wants to beat Brett. Brett wants to beat John. I want to beat both. Of them, yeah, so. yeah, just straight up. So there's that aspect that's a short-term goal but it's like i just want to be remembered as someone that was able to give back to the palace community through just like whether it's products or inspiring someone else to uh, to start powerlifting or something like that or you know helping other lifters come into the sport i just want to be i want to be one of the greats and then help pilots and get to a better place than it is now that a boy you got any other questions ready this is good uh no it was a good interview i, I like this one yeah very well, you're very well spoken i tell you what yeah thanks for coming on and we're gonna be watching this uh in two weeks time and then obviously the raw nationals and i think if you put up a 790 <sighs> when, you, when you break the, that 800 you better give us a call because we're going back on here to talk about <laughs> yeah, it man, we'll talk we'll talk for it i got you i got you i got you okay <laughs> listen man thanks for coming on good luck with everything and we'll keep All in right, touch man. we'll keep reposting Appreciate it, I got you. Appreciate it, thank See you guys for that too. Talk to you later. All right. Fucking 790 total, man. For real, 795 was the world championships in the NPF. He's capable. He's right the hell up there. He's capable, and he, and you see it just keep growing. Like, his, yeah. his, at 22 years old, only two years, but I mean, there isn't a, I, that guy's like... You know, it's crazy two, that progress but, but, but he's like two percent body fat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he is sitting there just jacked and well, ready to go. He's and, walking around. So he said he's five six. He's walking around sometimes around buck ninety. That's a stocky ass dude. Yeah. At that body fat, like he's got 
No fat on his body, buck ninety, five foot six. That's yeah. jacked, man. But I what? knew he'd have to be about five six. Remember, we were asking, they were asking Joey and Sean, like, how tall is this dude, man? Because he looks jacked as shit. And they were like, I think he's like five seven, five. I'm like, no way he can be. He's got to be even shorter. Actually, five six isn't even. I thought he might be shorter than that. How thick he is. He's huge, man. Yeah. But, but he's a uh, yeah. He's he's capable. He's young. Some of these bodybuilders, like, there's one thing about it is that with bodybuilding, you, you're you more aware of each muscle, you know, like, and, and these guys here would, like, they're into the, like, the stretching, everything, like, all that stuff to get into it before, and I think there's a part of it, when you see him coming in, like, two years, he's just crushing shit, yeah. Like, yeah. crushing shit. Well, it, well, I, I mean, he's, he's had 10, you know, almost yeah, 10 years of being, glad. 10, 10 years of being in the gym and 10 years of, of dedication, I mean, he says he's got no vices, like, he got mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah, like he's he's coming in there just a straight athlete. Like that's that's, a, that's Olympic style shit right there. If you've been squatting and bench pressing since you were twelve, holy, f that's what fucking. But, the, you but, but he just told the story of a lot of Olympians, born and raised doing something. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. never never backing off, never you know. Yeah, even transitioning from, um, he just started deadlifting within the past two years. But his nervous system, because he's squatting heavy, benching heavy, his nervous system was always strong as hell. And he's young. And he's young as hell too, so the progress is going to bounce be there. back. The the testosterone, yeah. Yeah. the whole thing. Twenty two like, years old, you're yeah, you're you, this is your prime years for, yeah. for all of that recovery and the whole night. So he's gonna if he hits seven ninety, and yes, the world was I think it was seven ninety five ish. It was under eight hundred, and only two guys ever I believe have hit eight hundred and up. That's John and Brett. John's gone, man, and he's gonna be in the eight hundred soon. It'll be him, John, Brett, because Gruden. Sean Noriega, those are like strong cats, but they're not up in that 800 range yet. They're young as shit too. Who knows in the future what could happen? But damn, he's gonna he could be he could be the next IPF Open World Champion by the time the world rolls around again. And it's hard to say what it's hard to say what Hack will do. I mean, with the payouts that are happening now, it's hard to say if you're ever gonna see him back. I mean, we don't know. We don't know Hack. Damn, don't I know wish he, just for I'd be selfish. I'm, I'm not the one getting checks. You like want that. you want to be able to see it, but you almost want to see, see that. you almost you. you the other thing is sometimes you just want to see it off the someone's gym, off the map, and just these guys all go at it for once. You know, no meat, no nothing. Yeah, and just, the thing is though, like when it's official, it's yeah, it's official. Tension's crazy. I know. Like when it's like three judges, because then it also because like if it's in the gym, it's too unofficial, too friendly. People, will, you aren't going to do too many controversial calls. The fact that you can lose a squat from not going deep enough is scary. It makes it like like look, like, uh, Gibbs got called on a squat for for depth. You know what I mean? If they would have just gave that to him, he'd yeah. be champ. But now he's, you know, that, that kind of shit makes it. Well, it's crazy with that stuff, and I mean, with the IPF. Because, I mean, I just seen Cornelius post that long post about there about the whole thing. He wants to compete in other federations because he wants to go against the best. The best of yeah. all, it doesn't matter what, what they are or whatever, at 275. And he was saying he got warned um, when he wanted to do the LA Fit Expo. He got warned that if he did it, he was going to get... Off old. the world team? Yeah. yeah. So he's looking, I think announced he is going to do a meet here soon, but it's against... It's off the kind of off the off the charts. It's not a. It can't be a world. It can't be an invite or a world meet in another class, is what he said. And, and he's gonna and he's gonna do it and go for the two seventy five again. And it won't be a it world meet though. It won't be a world. It can't be a world or invite. Okay. is what it said. He okay. said uh, that's how you get toasted. Okay. Because honestly, I, I I talked to him um, at the IPF Worlds at the like the lifter banquet. Um, and I was like, because he was, he was talking just that. He was thinking, like, he's an extremely competitive guy. Yeah. He's running it. In the, in the 120 class, he's running it right now. So well, he's, he's running he's, it. He's, he's, in, the, in the squad, he's taking the 275s. Yeah, and so he, he wants... He untested. Like, he wants, he wants uh, competition, right? Yeah. But he also wants to, like, build that legacy in, in, in the IPF. He could make a run. He could have an era. He could go, like... Six, seven years straight winning world championships. Well, well, his goals, I mean, there's a lot of people in there. I mean, Dennis, I think he told us about three years he's been actually competitive powerlifting or whatever. I mean, <clears throat> it's obvious he's been lifting longer than that. But yeah. the thing is about him is, like, when he goes against these guys, like, a lot of people are comparing themselves to to their weight class. Like, yeah. him talking about, I want to take on Gibbs. I want to take on Hack. Yeah. This guy's talking, taking 275 untested, talking about going against... Ray. He's, that's an uber competitive. Go, 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 going against like Kelly. Yeah, like he said, he looks at Kelly because you know what I mean. Like, and honestly, he's not that far off. Like, yeah, that's yeah. that's the scary part. Yeah. And, he, and he's a hell of a lot less weight. Yeah, no, he's, he's way hundred pounds. Yeah, he doesn't care. You could be on sauce. You could be whatever. I want to go at you. 
That he's competitive. And, he's, and you know, talking to him, like, you know that when we're talking to him. Extremely nice guy. Nobody's got a bad thing to say about Dennis yeah. I mean, he just crushed that 400 kg. Like, I mean, yeah. that, that coming into that, I mean, he, he everybody's notices that guy. It doesn't matter yeah. who you are. Like, yeah, well, he could be in the 900s, for squatting, which is insane. At 275, which all the other 120s in the world are gonna be pissed. Oh fuck! Well, that just ends it right there. Because yeah. I mean, like, his deadlifts, his only, his only, the, 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 I'd say the weakest point of his three lifts, and mm -hmm. it's not a weak point. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's. I know, that's why I heard you hesitate. What's the word I want to use? I don't want to say it's, weakest. Yeah, it's, it's kind it's, of hard. It's, 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 it's not the weakest point, but it, I mean, it's, it's, it's all the his. It's, yeah. the, it's a chain, the, the little bit of his chain, right? Like, yeah. but. I don't know, man. He's he's something to watch. But that was great. I liked it. That was a good interview. Yeah. Very well spoken for a 22-year-old. He's 22 years old. Young as shit. He got his shit together. Got his shit together. We got social make media. Making money. Yes, I was going to yeah. say, making money off social making media. Making money off this is This is the new age, man. This is what it is. This is. Three, four years ago, there was no powerlifters making money on social media. There was no, in 2013, there was no powerlifters making money on social media. No one even knew who the fuck you are. Now, we got people big enough that they make money off of social media and shit. That's crazy. That's good. And he's like, he's the future, right? Yeah. Literally, he could be winning titles and shit, and, or like at 22, even if he doesn't win it right off the bat, at some point he's going to pick up a title here or there. Um, but that's what you're going to have is future stars with big backgrounds, big characters. Well, the, the thing is, too, we've talked about it before. I mean, powerlifters used to peak in their 30s, right? Like mm -hmm. it was, you know, later on in their age, but... They didn't start at 12. That's it. So the, the difference is, it's not that you're seeing these breakout athletes at 20 years old. Like, you talk to him, he's been he's been 10 years of steady lifting, steady dieting, no drinking, no nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you were 17, 18, 19, you know, where... Those files were sealed. Yes. Right? Don't throw just, me Just a saint, I'm sure you I were. I like, I was in church. Yeah. <laughs> studying. So, I, so you look at that, even somebody starting at 20 years old and... and and, and, and coming in at their 30, but they probably still aren't going to live that life. Like, and here's another thing, too. Um, the, the sport's big enough now that guys are like like him being a 22, man. Hey, I think I'm going to powerlift. I like powerlifting. Back in the day, like, I know when I was 22, there was fucking powerlifting wasn't, you wouldn't even hear, there was no social media first off. Yeah, I'm that old. But fucking, there was nothing around like that. So you wouldn't have even find out about powerlifting until you were 30. But not you only, have to run into a powerlifter somehow. But, but the, not only that, he even said it like it. He, he did it right there when he said how fast it's taken off because two and a half years ago he said or he had a friend who said you should do powerlifting he's like well what's that yeah social media had powerlifting in two and a half years ago it was just that's really the beginning point it's yeah, really yeah. when it really started to go it's blowing right there yeah, I mean, the more guys like him that decide I'm going to start powerlifting and can blow up their <laughs> social media and shit the bigger the sport it's, it's exponential growth well, especially it. it's especially when they're they're they got the two is bodybuilding and thing because you see the guys that are bodied up and the thing that's what the, you like you, the Ben Pollocks like, yeah, you, yeah. you see the following go huge because yeah. they're taking both atmosphere and bodybuilding has such I mean you look at the following of some of these like IFBB pro guys yeah, yeah. it's oh, a huge. million yeah. two million you know yeah, so yeah. when you get a guy like that comes out and does it he's pulling big lifts and yeah. then looks well, like that well, well dudes like back in the day powerlifters had the bad reputation of being fat yeah. but, 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 uh, but strong but dudes want to aspire to be you so you got it. If you look like a fucking bodybuilder, like that's why Arnold Schwarzenegger was in all those action movies. You look like that and can lift those kind of weights. Yeah, people are going to be following you all over you, man. Same with the girls. Same deal, man. You you look the part and you're not like, I lift weights so people get this, like gone are the days. I'm like, I don't want to get too bulky. All that yeah. bullshit. That's gone now, right? Thank God. <laughs> Fuck, man, that pisses me off. I hate it when girls say that. I've had people come to me be like, can you coach me weightlifting? I don't want to get too bulky, though. You got to keep it moving, sweetheart. You mean you don't want an ass. Or, or whatever. <laughs> like, you got to keep moving because I hate that. That's a pet peeve of mine. But anyways, good episode. We got another one back-to-back -back filming today. Um, and I got to eat. Yeah. I'm starving. Peace.